Jill, we often hear that story structure is easy and that it doesn't require much effort. Do you agree? Well, I mean, I think it's to get the right structure for your story, there's, that's 90% of the work. Um, is it easy to do that? Well, it depends on how good you are with story structure, but it's, I mean, it's everything, right? I mean, uh, I, I obviously was not the first person to say this, but story is structure. Um, and to get it right is all the difference between a story being um, effective and not being effective or, you know, um, drawing us in or boring us. Like, that's what it is. Um, I had a, you know, people have a real, um, or some people have a, have a real hang up about the idea of structure. Like even the word seems to offend them. Um, and I was at, I was at a party one time where I ran into a student of mine and she introduced me to a famous documentary filmmaker who I'm not going to name and introduced me as her teacher who wrote this book on story structure. And his attitude to me was a little bit like structure smucture, you know, and I, I was amused and I said, you know, well, let me understand something for your, for your documentary, documentary films. Do you just stick a camera on one person and like have them talk for an hour and a half without any edits, you know, no cuts? And he said, of course not. You know, we employ editing, we have B-roll, you know, we do all these things to tell a story. And I said, well, if you're employing editing and uh, a B-story and uh, B-roll, you're employing structure. That, that's all structure is. It's the events that you choose to show in the order you choose to show them in. That's all it means. So, I mean, it, it constitutes, I think, 90% of the work. Now, how good you, how much you're going to put into it or how long that takes you, it really depends. You know, so many people come to me and they say, you know, structure is my weakness. And I say, well, you came to the right place because structure is my strength. I'm really good at that. Um, but it's a, it's a really good skill for all writers to understand. Because once you have the structure, like that's the maybe not as fun part, um, but it's the scaffolding that makes it easy to write your script. If you know the structure, it's not, it's no problem writing the, the script. It shouldn't be a problem. You're not going to have the issue that so many people have where they're halfway through and they run out of steam. I hear that all the time, right? People get to page 60, they peter out. You're not going to peter out if you have good story structure to begin with, where you know where you're going. Um, it's going to, it's going to support the whole thing. And then most writers, I would imagine, and maybe I'm wrong, are right brain people, and it seems like structure is a very left brain activity. And, and really you can't, what is the saying, you can't sort of break the rules until you know the rules? Exactly, exactly. I mean, I guess I'm, maybe I'm a rule person, or maybe it, or it was easy for me, I was eager to learn the rules in order to break the rules. Um, I think I'm a bit of a mix of the left and the right, and so that's why structure is a lot easier to me than it is a lot of writers. I still do some writing. The writing's really hard for me. Um, but structure, structure's easy. Like I, it's become intuitive to me at this point that I can pretty quickly pick out what's working, what's not, and tell you why not. And, um, and, and that's structure. That, that's how I know these things. Um, you know, I can see you're, you're picking a choice in your climax that I saw coming from the very beginning and let's find you a different choice. Um, you know, those are, those are the kinds of things that we can do uh, with structure and, and when you have a firm grasp on that, it just makes the storytelling so easy. Why do you say that 75% of screenwriters' creative effort should go toward structure? Because structure is everything. It's gonna make your life easy. You know, what, what we're doing with structure, particularly when I'm using my method, my nutshell technique method, is I'm setting up things, helping you set up some things that happen in the beginning and that happen in the end. And those things aren't random, they're, they're connected. And if we set them up properly, it does all the heavy lifting of holding up your story, holding up the bulk of your story where which is the, the middle, the, the second act, um, which is twice as long as, 
as the first act or the third act. It's twice as long, but if we have the right structure, um, it's going to hold it up, even though I don't have any structure elements really in the second act, um, as long as we found the right elements. And so, you know, that's why I am a big proponent in putting the time in advance to figuring out the structure. Let's figure it out. A lot of writers don't. They just, they just write. And that's the way to discover the story. And, you know, that's okay as long as you are going to be happy with being told maybe you have to throw out a draft because you didn't discover till the end of it. It was like, oh, actually, I should have maybe started the story towards the, the end and gone further instead of exploring this, those kinds of things. I'm not that kind of person. I can't stand writing additional drafts. Um, and so I just think it's easier. We can set up these things um, to understand the structure without writing a single page. And in fact, it's easier to do it that way because it's, you know, my form is a one page nutshell technique form that, you know, we could see right on the form what's working and what's not. And if it's not, it's really easy to fix because it's on one piece of paper. When you have written 120 pages, it's a mess to fix it. Um, so, you know, that's why I say get that work out of the way in the beginning. The other stuff's easy. Sure, and it's almost like a game of Jenga or dominoes that if you take yeah. one little piece, the rest of it will collapse. So exactly. it's not just that easy. Yeah, or even if you have a vague idea of what your structure is, like you said, it's, you know, one piece can make it collapse. You get in a certain way and you realize, oh, this isn't actually working the way I thought it was. And, um, but now you've written yourself halfway through and, you know, do you want to go back to the drawing board? A lot of people don't. And what do you say to students that, uh, well, I know you do in-person classes and Zoom, I think? I do Zoom classes and I do, yeah, and I, I do everything on Zoom now, actually, my okay. classes and my consultation. What do you say, though, to students that say, you know what, this is taking all the joy out of writing. I, I am an artist. I want to create and just let it, I want to bleed on the page. Yeah. You know, I think that they, the first thing I would say if they were a student of mine would be, first of all, I want you to try it my way. Right? You've signed up for this class. This is, you know, class is about the nutshell technique. I want you to try it my way. Um, and I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised that, in fact, it's freeing. It's not constrictive. It sounds very constrictive to those who don't understand structure. Um, and it may feel that way at first. It really, I know people feel like they're, you know, shoehorning things into fitting them into my boxes. Um, but once you have a structure, you know, figured out, you can, you know, I exaggerate it a little bit, but it's like eight words on a post-it, essentially. You can stick on your monitor and then you write with the joy and you know you're not going to write yourself into a corner. Um, you can trust that you've done the heavy lifting, you've done the heavy thinking and figured out the structure already. And so now you can have joy on the page. You know, now this, you know, as the scenes come alive, I don't have to worry about, oh, am I writing myself into a corner? I, I've already figured that out. I can live and breathe on the page along with the characters. Um, so it's, you know, it's forcing you to think about those things up front. It's forcing you to think about really what your story is about. That's what it is. I mean, you know, a story is not just a bunch of events after each other, right? Um, or a premise that you're not sure where it goes. Uh, a story is going to impact us and, and it has meaning. And it's not likely you're going to randomly come across that meaning. Um, and so I think it's really worth investing the time up front to figure out the structure. And by the way, I use a very loose sense of it. You know, I don't use a beat sheet approach. I don't tell you you have to hit all these pre-prescribed beats. I have a couple of things that are grounded in linear time. I mean, you have to have a first scene, you have to have a last scene. There's something that happens at 25% and there's something that happens at 75%. But other than that, my elements of structure are not linear. It's, it's not about time. It's about the connection between these four things. And so if you figure that out in advance, then, then you're going to be able to have joy in the page. Then you're not going to have anxiety in the page or, or end up writing 140 pages that end up 
you know, being a long situation that doesn't really have a point to it. You've already figured out what the story is about ahead of time. And so now you can experience the joy of letting the characters come alive.